Rebel military officers have seized power in Gabon. The coup happened minutes after President Ali Bongo was declared the winner of disputed elections. The military have closed the borders to the Central African nation and cancelled the election results. All state institutions have been dissolved. Bongo has confirmed he is under house arrest. The African Union has convened an emergency meeting to assess the situation in the country. Communique. Gabonese woke on Wednesday to a dramatic announcement on national TV by a group of uniformed men. In the name of the people of Gabon and as guarantors of the institutions, we have decided to defend peace by putting an end to the current regime. To this end, the general elections of August 26, 2023, and the truncated results are cancelled. The incumbent president, Ali Bongo Ondimba, had claimed victory in Saturday's elections, a result immediately disputed by the opposition. Bongo is running for a third term and hoping to extend his 14-year rule over the country. He took power in 2009 after his father ruled Gabon for over four decades. His main election rival, Ondo Osa, accused Bongo of election fraud after polls closed. The vote was marred by accusations of polling stations opening late and faulty election papers. The government cut the internet and imposed a curfew after the election, claiming it wanted to prevent unrest and the spread of fake news. Later on Wednesday, Bongo issued a video from his residence where he'd been placed under house arrest. I'm Ali Bongo Ondimba, president of Gabon. And I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me. On the streets of the capital, Libreville, People cheered the soldiers that had taken control of the city. This show of support for the coup is a sign that for many Gabonese, it is time to put an end to 55 years of family rule. Now, our correspondent Amaka Okoye is uh, monitoring events in Gabon uh, for us. Amaka, what more can you tell us about who is behind this coup? Is it clear what kind of support they have domestically? Interesting. I mean, the people who made the announcement, the military officers, they called themselves uh, the Committee for um, com committee for Transitions and re Restoration. Um, and they did make that announcement. But we have also seen that uh, there are a lot of images. Thankfully, the Internet is back and there are a lot of images coming out showing uh, some uh, military officers as well uh, hailing and raising, if you like, uh, the head of the Republican Guard, the Colonel Brees. Uh, Oligi Nguema, uh, who himself also did uh, grant an interview to a French newspaper saying that he is not announcing yet whether he is the leader, but they're going to have a meeting, and after the meeting they're going to say who is going to be the leader. But it seems that he's getting support from his, uh, you know, his uh, military supporters, other uh, military soldiers there. So it might seem that he's been selected as the leader, but of course uh, we don't have any clear statement. But yes, uh, that's what has happened today, and just like we mentioned, the Gabonese are rather grappling with this information. Nobody seems to be talking about the results of the election already. It's more of support for the coup. We have really great support, people coming out uh, you know, on the streets, showing support for the military personnel mm. and saying, of course, it seems that like this is what they want, to take out the long rule of the bongos, if you like. Now, if successful, this would be the eighth coup in Western Central Africa since 2020. The last one uh, in Niger just happened just last month. It's like an epidemic. Is there a common thread there? You're right about saying it's just like an epidemic. You know, uh, an analyst was saying earlier, it's a question of I, my neighbor do this and then I try out and see if it works. But the interesting uh, thing about the coup now in Gabon is that the narrative seems to be different as opposed to, you know, perhaps what we heard when Niger happened, economic situation, bad governance. But but this particularly seems to be speaking to the long reign of the bongos. As you do know, they have now been there for over 50 years, you know, moving from Oma Bongo to Ali Bongo, 
uh, who is there. So it seems that th this whole situation is packed off by the long reign of the Alibongo and the military seeming, seeming to say, you know what, we need to take this person out and, and, and try a different person. So that's the slight difference in terms of narrative of what we are seeing. And of course, analysts and experts are projecting that this is just not going to be the end. This is going to continue around, you know, across the continent and across the region, unfortunately. VW, so Michael Koye there. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So for more, let's turn to Mbule Nzege Leonard, a political economist from Cameroon, which borders Gabon. He's now a doctoral student at the University of Cape Town and also works as a research analyst for Africa Risk Consulting. Welcome. After decades of one family rule, was this last election a tipping point in Gabon? Uh, good afternoon. It is seemingly so. The Bongo family has been in power since 1967, and as the report indicated, he, um, the embattled president, uh, Ali Bongo, who has been arrested by soldiers who are leading the coup, he took over in 2009, and this was his third election that he had won since taking power. Um, he has been faced with domestic um, discontent. There has also been, um, that's respect to the economic downturn that the country faced. They had two oil shocks. And then there's also been a lot of poverty. The country is an upper middle income country, but then there's a 33% poverty rate and there's a 20% unemployment rate. Mm. And there's been anger with respect to the fact that the Bongo family for all these years, despite having all of the access to resources because Gabon is petroleum rich, that this um, these benefits haven't accrued to the, the majority of the population. So those people cheering for the military um, we saw, can we understand that as widespread public support for this coup? It could be interpreted as such. Um, the uh, survey poll done by Afrobarometer has, has stipulated that 66% um, of Gabonese uh, people surveyed said that in the event that the elected leaders are abusing power, they would not mind the military taking over to rectify the situation. Gabon is what you would call an electoral authoritarian um, uh, regime, whereby even though multi-party uh, elections are carried out on a regular basis, that is every seven years, the institutions of democracy, the rule of law, have all been subverted by the rule of the Bongo family, which has control over the various facets of society, be it the politi uh, political regime, be it the military and security apparatus, as well as economic and social affairs. So. That stranglehold over all of these facets of society over time came to a headway with these most recent elections. We also see it in the context of um, a wider regional trend. Uh, Niger's coup uh, just last month, for example. Do you think what we saw happen there has emboldened the military in Gabon to try their luck? Definitely. Even though they're different regions and different contexts, you can come to you can realize that there is a contagion of sorts of military rule wherein the military leaders, in addition to whatever personal ambitions they have, they are feeding up the grievances of the population, which are unhappy with the governance, which are unhappy with the corruption, which are unhappy with the fact that the perceived benefits of democracy are not accruing to the rest of society. So considering that not much has been done to counter these uh, military coups in West Africa, it, is seeming, it seems that the Gabonese military establishment has taken advantage of it has used that, uh, this current state of affairs, to attempt to take over of power in Gabon. And do you have a sense of where things go from here? Are we looking at potentially a transition to true democracy, or will this result in years of military rule? Well, what I've always said is that the issue of military rule is that it, can, it's not, it doesn't exist in perpetuity. The military leaders understand that at some point they have to tran um, transfer power to civilian rule and reinstitute constitutional order. The situation at present is very fluid. We don't know who are the orchestrators of the uh, of the ongoing coup. Um, it seems that is as if it's members of the um, Republican Guard, and the Republican Guard is led by General Brace Ingema, who is Bongo's cousin. So we don't know whether it is family dynamics, whether it's a desire to preserve certain aspects of the regime and just set aside the most undesirable aspects. Or it could be a scenario where they are trying to actually reestablish the whole political and socioeconomic configuration in the country. So right now we can't tell, but then it is a very, very fluid 
and very um, unexpected situation at hand in Gabon. And drawing further um, comparisons to the coup in Niger, we saw after that military takeover, people waving Russian flags, um, questions about how much influence Russia would be exerting there. Do you expect to see similar in Gabon? Not at all. Um, Russia has very, very, with the exception of the Central African Republic, Russia has very little influence in that region. France has been the overriding, most influential international power in Gabon. Um, most of the political elite, be it within the ruling class, be it within the opposition, um, as well as in the business and economic slate, all have very close ties to France. So it would be very unlikely for there to be any sort of outright um, support for Russia, especially when you consider that um, a lot of the anger is geared not necessarily towards um, a security situation. There's no deterioration of security. There's no particular terrorist threats in Gabon, but rather socioeconomic grievances and, you know, anger towards the fact that the Bongo family has been in power for over 60 years. So um, in that regard, I think that there would still be engagement with international um, uh, powers, but then there wouldn't be some sort of opening towards Russia in that regard. Well, thank you so much for joining us on DW News with that really enlightening interview. That is Mbulit Nzege Leonard, political economist, now at the University of Cape Town. Thank you very much.